For the past 10 years, the Nzisha Prize has championed very young entrepreneurs on the African continent. Each year, we go on a mission to find Africa's brightest and youngest entrepreneurs who are running job generative businesses that are transforming their communities. For the very first time, we're taking you along with us. Welcome to the quest. We will travel across the continent to meet these exciting change makers to find out more about what they do and how they do it. Over the four episodes, follow me, Didi Ong, and my resident cameraman, Mfundo Mbanze, as we meet these entrepreneurs and assess their businesses based on their business model, leadership potential, scalability, and job creation capabilities. At the end of the four episodes, we will reveal our top 26 entrepreneurs who will become the 2021 and Zisha Prize Fellows. Are you ready? Let the quest begin. Let's go! Welcome back to The Quest. This is the final episode. This week, we're revealing our top 26 entrepreneurs who will become part of the Nzisha Prize Fellowship Program, where they'll have access to world-class coaching, cash stipends, and accelerate their entrepreneurial journey. After four weeks, nine countries, and 50 entrepreneurs, we've narrowed it down to our top 26. Didi and I have met some of these entrepreneurs. Over the last couple of months, we've got to know them a little bit better, interrogated their uh, business models, and debated on who should make the final cut. We know that you have your favorites, but before the big reveal, let's take a look at some of our top moments. On our adventures, we met Marcelo Mahoro on home soil in South Africa whose passion for agriculture was clear to see. Then we jetted off to Malawi and had a light bulb moment with Martin Masia, whose entrepreneurial journey started at the tender age of 15. While our time in Southern Africa was enjoyable, we craved more. So we landed in the heat of West Africa and experienced no Jolof Wars, just young entrepreneurs like Tohib Ojoalape, Rebecca Kaloko and Sergio Tabe, who all set the bar high. The entrepreneurs didn't make our job easy. Mfunda and I often debated about who should make it into the top 26. Some might say I led with my head and Mfundo led with his heart. As our journey continued, we moved from west to east and became well acquainted with the pride and pearl of Africa. In Uganda, Viola introduced us to the impact of social entrepreneurship with her project, A Hand for Refugees. Kenya showed us through Martin Ondiwa that parental support is of utmost importance when it comes to young people pursuing entrepreneurship. We have learned that creating an enabling environment for young people is key. The World Economic Forum echoes that sentiment. In their youth report, they highlight that creating immersive and supportive experiences is essential to empowering the next wave of youth entrepreneurs. While we only showed you three entrepreneurs per episode, we wanted to make special mention to some of our top 50 entrepreneurs who showed us that entrepreneurship was alive and in safe hands with their businesses that are changing the communities for the better. Mundo. Didi. I'm really sad our travels have come to an end. How are you feeling? I share in your pain. Mm. But I am particularly excited to meet some of our young entrepreneurs. I know, me too. I'm really excited for the top 50. I think they've given us an array of what entrepreneurship looks like on the continent. Did any entrepreneur or country stand out for you? Of course, Didi, of course. My belly is in the west. Uh -huh. But my mind is in the east. Yeah. And I think the entrepreneurs in last week's episodes have a lot of strong business models. And I think there's a lot of room to scale their uh, projects. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think West African entrepreneurs merged technology, so that was really interesting to see. In East Africa, we saw a surge in job creation. And then Southern Africa offered us um, an interesting take on agriculture and environmental issues. Um, so I'm really excited to see how they grow within the fellowship. I feel like we've been rambling for far too long. Yeah, we have, we have. The people want to know. The Didi, people want to know. Who's in our top 26? Can't we tell them now? We can. Here's the first batch of our top 26. 
In Southern Africa, Marcelo Majoro, the founder of Starlicious Enterprises, she grows day-old broiler chicks and pigs and sells them to individuals in her community. Renata Silva, the founder of RS Clothing Brand, which sells trendy clothes to young people between the ages of 15 to 25. Tantatiana Rakotwarimanga, the founder of Dream Study Agency. The agency helps students in Madagascar apply for universities abroad. In West Africa, Onei Oshi, the founder of Matalas Nasa, the business farms chickens, fish, and eggs to sell them to urban dwellers through an e-commerce web application called Pharmasphere. Constant Aniyohu Noun, the founder of Agrecosal, a company that produces organic fertilizers and pesticides. Sergio Ashu, the founder of Excel Academy, which provides private home tutoring services to K-12 students. Grace Ocasie, the founder of Royal Graced Baking Company, which bakes and sells healthy snacks and foods to customers. Omar So, the founder of Felian Trading Limited. The business cultivates rice and cassava. In East Africa, Martin Ondiwa, the founder of Green Farms, a company that produces and sells fresh fruits to consumers and vendors. In Central Africa, Victoire Bakunza, the founder of Basui, a fashion business that produces African-style jackets and tunics. What do you think about our first set of entrepreneurs? I think they all bring something interesting to the table. I am super psyched and I can't wait to see them grow. Me too, I'm really excited. And although we've been on a two woman man adventure, we thought we'd bring in an expert opinion to help us make the best decision in choosing the top 26 entrepreneurs. So we invited Fred Swanica, who's a veteran entrepreneur and the co-founder of African Leadership Academy. <laughs> He's launched about eight ventures and is passionate about developing leaders primarily in Africa. A lot of people consider you a veteran and a serial entrepreneur. So thinking about the young um, entrepreneurs, what are the top three skills or traits do you think um, a young person or an entrepreneur should possess to put them in good stead to be successful? Number one, you need resilience. Mm. Because the only thing that you can be guaranteed of as an entrepreneur is that your plan will not work. <laughs> Whatever that plan is. You're going to be knocked down, you're going to be punched in the face, you're going to fall down, you need to keep, pick yourself up and keep going. The second is passion, right? You've got to love what you're doing because that passion will, will be infectious and infect you know, the, the people that you, that you hire onto your teams. It will infect your first customers mm -hmm. who are part of this. It'll, you know, the investors will be, will be drawn by, and attracted by your passion. And most importantly, the passion is what will give you the energy to keep going through all those challenges. That fire that's in your belly. A third trait that I think entrepreneurs need is imagination. You've got to be able to imagine a new and better way of doing something. And you've got to dream and uh, see something that others cannot see. Combining all those three things, um, in your experience, as if you started um, eight businesses and ventures, what do you think makes a business model successful or a business successful? One is you need a, a, a great idea mm -hmm. right, of a problem that you're trying to solve. In the AL group, we talk about these seven grand challenges of Africa. Big problems like urbanization. 800 million people are moving to cities in Africa. So that's going to create all kinds of problems around sanitation, housing, traffic, you know, urban planning. Um, but that's also where the great opportunities are. Because imagine all the garbage that's going to be created in cities as people moving into, into, into Right. So then that's a problem on the one hand, but it's also a great opportunity on that because you can be the person who figures out a way to clean up that garbage and do it in an efficient way and create a subscription business out of it or whatever and then suddenly you're a garbage billionaire. Right? <laughs> the second is you need um, a great team. Right? Mm -hmm. You need people who are going to be as passionate about this adventure as you are, who are going to bring their blood, sweat and tears to make it happen. And then the third, you need some capital. 
What I am learning is that the most critical thing to success in this moment is customer experience. Can you give your customers the best experience ever? Can you truly understand the customer's needs and create innovative solutions for that customer's needs and then deliver it with quality and consistency such that your customer loves you? Mm. And this has become much more important now than it was maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Because the barriers to entry into a business have never been lower. But very few people can deliver. Mm. So there are too many talkers and not enough doers. And the doers are the ones who actually win. And so you've got to do what you say you're going to do, what you claim you, you're going to do for your customers. And do it so well that they love you. And then, then they they tell others about you. And that's actually the, the way you sustain yourself and you stand out from others. Um, earlier you mentioned um, having passion. And I know you're quite passionate about leadership potential within in young people. And it's one of the traits that we look at when we're selecting our entrepreneurs to come into the cohort, leadership potential. Why do you think leadership potential is particularly important for young people who are entrepreneurs on the continent? We've had different stages of leaders. Mm -hmm. We had the first generation of leaders who brought us independence. And then the second generation brought us chaos. <laughs> and then the third generation brought us stability. And now the fourth generation needs to bring us prosperity. Mm. because that's the battle that we have not won yet. We're still poor as a continent. And that's why entrepreneurial leaders are so critical at this moment. Entrepreneurship is very difficult. And at Anzisha, we never gloss over the fact that it is a, a tough journey. So I wondered, like, because you've started businesses and you're, you're an entrepreneur, how have you dealt with failure or making mistakes and turned them into moments of learning? So my, my most powerful learning moments have all come from failures. So I actually look forward to failure because mm. then I know that the very next thing is a learning, mm. right? And then, that, and then that leads to my growth as an entrepreneur. And so I'm not scared of failure at all. In fact, I, I just look at it as just a natural part of the process, right? If you're not failing enough means you're not trying enough, means you're not daring enough, you're not being bold enough, mm. right? Because safe ideas do not change the world. Right. And so, um, you have to take risk, and but with risk comes the chance of failure. But then with failure comes learning, <laughs> and then with learning comes growth. What advice can you give young people who are either entrepreneurs or thinking about pursuing entrepreneurship? I would say that everyone should try to be an entrepreneur at least once in their life. It is the absolute best job in the world. You have energy every day to go to work because you know why you're working. You have the freedom to make decisions. It just gives you so much meaning in your life. So do I still have a chance for it? Can I also, is that advice also meant for me? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You're still with you. <laughs> um, I always ask any entrepreneur that I, I interview this question. So finish the sentence for me. An entrepreneur is? Super cool. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Thank you so much, Fred. This has been an enlightening conversation. I'm sure the young people who are going to watch um, are just going to feel inspired. Um, thank you for dropping all the gems. We're really excited to have you part of the quest. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank and, uh, you. excited to see all the young entrepreneurs that we'll find through the process. And yeah. The change they're going to bring to Africa. As Fred mentioned, passion is one of the key traits that an entrepreneur should have. The next sets of entrepreneurs ooze passion in abundance and that is one of the reasons that they made it to our top 26. In Southern Africa, Mahabiribo Andriana Rianwa, the founder of Kufe, a fashion brand that specializes in embroidered customizable t-shirts that are handmade by women detained in prison. Martin Masia, the founder of Solis Energy, which distributes solar lamps and solar lanterns using a pay-as-you-go model for customers in semi-urban and rural areas. In West Africa, Adame Kante, the founder of Food Sante, which is a production and processing company for agri-food products. Ali Mohammed, the founder of Kriya Couture, a clothing company that sells a variety of products for men and women. Esther Akin Ajayi, the founder of Jemai Interiors, which sells furniture pieces and architectural materials. Rebecca Kaloku, the founder of Grace Venture Natural Products, which produces natural cosmetics that are sold in Sierra Leone. In East Africa, 
Jovia Kintu, the founder of Kia Cosmetics, the company manufactures and sells affordable organic shampoo, conditioner, and other hair products. Viola Kataike, the founder of A Hand for Refugees, a social enterprise that trains refugees in growing and harvesting passion fruit. Nenzisha Prize has supported and celebrated Africa's youngest entrepreneurs. Through helping them scale their businesses and sharing their stories to the world, the fellowship program has offered a safe space for the entrepreneurs to build, fail, excel, and try again. Our passion for young changemakers runs deep. If you don't believe me, take my colleague Tokuzem Joe's word. She spearheads the fellowship program with a dynamic team, and she's sharing more on why the fellowship is an important step for a young entrepreneur. Every year, we comb the continent looking for the finest, very young entrepreneurs who are running businesses with the potential to be job generative. Once they join our community, our focus is in helping them realize this potential. Our support program is informed by our findings on research we've been doing for the last 10 years, looking at Anzisha Fellows who've managed to create lots of jobs. And what our findings have revealed are four key elements that seem to be common. First, these businesses are able to offer great value. They have a well-defined problem that they're solving. They are clear on who they are solving this problem for. And they also know how their product can make things better for their customer. The second area is that all their activities are intentionally organized in a way where they're able to deliver this value consistently. The third point is that they have a team of competent and empowered employees who execute on these activities. And lastly, these businesses are uncompromising about collecting data that helps with decision making. So the intervention we provide is anchored by high touch support over a period of three years. The entrepreneurs will have access to skills development support. They will receive cash stipends on a biannual basis. At the end of the second year of the fellowship, they will have the opportunity to compete for the grand prizes. And lastly, they will also have the opportunity to apply for all expenses paid for just in time learning opportunities. We're excited to welcome this year's top 26 finalists and we're hoping that they can match our energy. We're about to reveal our last set of entrepreneurs we've made into the top 26. Yeah. What have you learned about entrepreneurship on our adventures so far? Mm, Didi, that is such a great question. I know, I have them sometimes. Um, if I'm being honest, uh, I think that young uh, people have some of the best ideas mm. and we shouldn't underestimate mm -hmm. the ability for them to transform their uh, communities. I think for me, I love the fact that they've shown how entrepreneurship is vital for job creation, especially how they're hiring their peers. I mean, if you think about what you were doing at 15, 20, yeah. were you hiring any of your friends? You. Exactly. <laughs> Here is the last set of our top 26 entrepreneurs. In Southern Africa, Munyaradzi Makosa, the founder of Farm Hut Africa, an online marketplace designed to connect farmers in rural Zimbabwe directly to the market. Tafadzwa Chikureti, the founder of Murimi Electronic Agriculture, the business helps financial institutions to process loans faster and farmers to ascertain their financial health. In West Africa, Olua Damilola Akinosum, co-founder of Grantmaster, an online marketplace that connects ambitious organizations that are in need of debt-free and equity-free funding. Amadou Ba, the founder of Calibé Investment, which produces paper bags and bags for packaging that are sold to local businesses. Rebecca Tabukuna, the founder of RBK Pearls, which manufactures and sells beaded accessories. Hebri Abraham, the founder of Data, which produces and sells vegetables to local markets in Cameroon. Christy Hebi, the founder of Yeiba Restaurants, the venture cooks and sells African and European dishes to local colleges. In East Africa, Doriles Mihanjo, the founder of Maktaba, 
the business sells educational documents to schools and educators. Well, there you have it, the top 26 Anzisha Prize Fellows. Woohoo! <laughs> Over the past few weeks, they've shown us that their resilience is the cornerstone for a thriving economy. So our challenge to you is help us build an enabling environment for young entrepreneurs. Support a young entrepreneur in your community by buying from them. Do not be afraid to have conversations in the classroom about running a business. And parents, remember, entrepreneurship is a viable career option. In fact, according to the International Development Research Center, young entrepreneurs are more likely to create more job opportunities for their peers. So with that in mind, the top 26 join our other 144 entrepreneurs in the network who are working towards creating more job opportunities for their peers. It has been an exciting journey uncovering Africa's hidden job creators. We hope the stories of our top 26 will inspire you to start your own entrepreneurial journey or to support a very young entrepreneur in your own community. Follow the journey of our fellows at nzishaprize.org forward slash fellows and for more exclusive content and to see who will win the grand prizes. Follow us on our social media platforms at nzishaprize. That's it from me, Mfundo, and my host, Didi. Let the journey begin.